Okay. Welcome to the first session of Labor Planet 2021. This talk is titled Bridging the Digital Divide in Education with Free Software and Hardware and will be presented by Shripath Roy Koganti. Shripath is the General Secretary of Swetcha Andhra Pradesh and is joining us live from Andhra Pradesh in India. Swetcha's motto is Technology for Society and they use a free software development model. In this talk, Shripath will talk about how computers, tablets, and mobile phones open a vast world of knowledge to students everywhere, and how it is critical to make sure that all students, including underprivileged students in underfunded schools, have access to these precious resources. He will also introduce you to the Bal Swetcha project, which applies the power of free software, free hardware designs, and freely licensed educational materials to bridge the digital divide. Okay, it's over to you now, Shripat. Thank you very much, uh, Propian. Uh, you are now and... muted. So this is Shripat, uh, General Secretary of Swecha Andhra Pradesh, uh, which is part of Free Software Movement of India. Today, uh, I just want to discuss about the bridge the digital divide that we have in the education due to the unavailability of IT infrastructure, hardware, and software. So before we go into the session, uh, it's been one long year of this pandemic, and uh, this conference is being conducted live, uh, and I really don't know what the audience are there and what is the demographics of the audience. So I just want to be a neutral, I, I just want to give you a neutral talk. Hope every one of you had a great or fantastic learning in the last one year staying at home staying safe and working at home having a great learning experiences but uh, there are a lot of people who are away from that so it is really sad to say that there are around uh, 16 million students who are out of classroom in the last one year of the pandemic so they don't had they didn't have any classwork they didn't have any school and they were completely out of the education so what was the learning platforms that happened in the last one year we all know that the biggest source of the knowledge is the internet where we have everything available everything accessible so just a click away i can find anything i require talk with anyone i i like discuss in the forums and do it myself. So how the la learning transformed in the last one year was everyone found the source of the power of internet to learn and explore. And also all the schools and the colleges ran the classes online and uh, the schooling happened completely online. The examinations happened online. There, was the there were initiatives of TV learning. So we had the content is broadcasted where the sessions or the school classes were telecasted in TVs. Uh, it, let's say I'll be more talking about the Indian context. So I'm from India and from a state called Andhra Pradesh. So I'll be talking about our initiatives from our region. So we had a lot of TV learning where the school lectures were broadcasted on TV and on radios. And not just that, there are few states in our country where, uh, where very few places, there were a lot of initiatives that were taken the, where the internet and TV were not there. The sessions were happened over the loudspeakers. So there were pretty much initiatives that happened to make sure the learning happened throughout the year. But there is still a lot of a gap. That is what we I want to show you here. The, India having a population of almost 140 crore, where the rural population constitutes of around 66% of it. If you look at the internet density or the internet users among the rural population, it's only 25%. So it's only 25% of the people who have access to the internet from our rural India. And uh, the people having a computer here, you can on the right side, you can see the people having the computer at their home is hardly 10% of the population. 
and uh, there are still a lot of people who don't even access or know how to use a computer. To be specific more in the Indian context, there are two kinds of education we had. One is a private education and a public funded education. And there are schools for the underprivileged, which are run by societies and welfares. So what kind of people join in what schools? So if you look at the public education, the students who are completely deprived from the economy or who are having a, under the below poverty line and the lower middle class of the country joins the public education here, at least from my state. And coming to the private education, there are a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of resources. There is a lot of teaching content. There is a lot of uh, scope of learning. That's why the middle class and the above middle class prefer to join the private education. So if you look at the schools that happen here, we can see a divide based on the class, based on the economical class. So where few set of students who are privileged with an economy and the access join the private education, where the students who don't even have the enough access to the resources or the money, the parents being the daily wage laborers or migrant workers or farmers or daily uh, workers, this their students usually go to government schools where the the fees is literally zero and for a private education the students invest thousands and thousands of rupees uh to buy or to go for the education and uh, there is if it is a fact that majority of the students in the public funded schools had never touched their computer in their entire schooling life so with this context, I want to go ahead with, with why we choose the government schools as the platform where we can do something about it. So as we can see, the entire divide of the education or the access to resources is huge from a private to a public funded system. In a private, in a public funded system, if you look at the IT infrastructure, the number of government schools having a computer, if you take an average number of computers in a government school, it will be very low in a single digit number. So an entire school of classes grades one to 10 will have a hardly a single digit number of computers in their school. And uh, what do they use for this computers for? They are not given access to the students, not majority of the students don't even have access to those computers. They are just used for the administration purposes and to store files and to do the administrative tasks. So the, all the computers are analyzed and they are way old hardware. So almost they were installed 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and they run on the very pretty much old hardware, being the Pentium processors or the basic AMD processors. And uh, they run on most of the computers run on uh, Windows operating systems and the proprietary software where the licenses have expired, which is making the computers completely non-functional and underutilized. And upon everything, there is one thing that is lacking. Though few schools have the computing resources, few schools have the uh, softwares, there is lack of resources who can aid the computer-based learning. So why I'm talking about the computer-based learning this much? Because today's education, today's knowledge systems are entirely on the internet and everyone is seeking the internet to get the knowledge, to do something and to learn everything. This is creating the divide. This has a divide since earlier where the public funded and the private funded schools where due to the lack of infrastructure, now with the knowledge sources and the pandemic coming in, the divide kept on increasing. That means the student who is going to a public funded school didn't go to schools in the last one year. He didn't have any internet access. He didn't had any computer with him. So what he was doing all this one year, he was just staying at home. He's learning something from his friends or 
going around that's it while a larger set of students a larger set of the privileged class actually go to a who is having internet access they are having the web streaming sessions or the live sessions and they are still having internet based exams yeah so that is where we started a project called balaswecha so this was started in around 2008 the name balaswecha so balaswecha says bala means kids or the school kids or the children swecha means freedom so it is a telugu language the title is in telugu language bala is in child and kids and swecha is freedom so what the aim of our project is to bridge the growing digital divide in the education between the privileged and the underprivileged yes we choose free software as a solution to solve this problem why we wanted to choose free software as a solution to solve this problem because we have free software that can run on the old infrastructure or on the low computing resources there are lightweight operating systems lightweight gnu linux operating systems where we can run on the older computers which we can make them live and at least give access to the few set of students that we can do and free software also gives us a freedom to use the existing tools modify remix and redistribute that is where we started or we started an initiative to build an operating system based on gnu linux and also we believe that at a school an underprivileged school can invest on a better infrastructure better hardware or a better computing machines than purchasing the licenses so this is why free software is a solution that we propose and that we use to build or go ahead with our project there are a lot of free software tools that are available for schools uh, starting with debian edu so there is a pure blend of debian which is available we use we have inkscape for design moodle for as a learning management system scratch which we use for teaching kids the basics of programming arduino office and libreoffice and lot of free software and open hardware tools to start off with and so with the free software we were able to include all the tools that we had into a, and bundle into an operating system so we thought just these tools are not enough and these tools are just tools to make something happen but we wanted to make the learning interactive if you look at major private schools or the private funded schools they run digital classrooms they have big big digital classrooms where they have lot of digital content available where the student can access the content see the videos and everything we found majority of the content that is available in the digital content were videos we thought just videos are something replacing a teacher so a teacher that that is telling online or teacher that is doing it on a, a video lecture we really don't want to replace the teacher here because the entire part of the schooling is not just about learning it is about the interaction so how a student interacts with the teacher ask the questions and how the teacher pampers the students and encourages them to be better to learn better this all happens only through the interaction so we just don't want the videos to replace the as a digital content we want something more and lot of ed tech tools that are available in our country are huge or of huge cost a student who can't even afford a smartphone and an internet connection there is no way that he can go for a by purchasing an ed tech tool so which is still creating a bigger divide between the privileged students and the students who are deprived from these access and uh, most of the content is not freely licensed so we can't use it for the way that we wish for that is where we thought of going with simulation aided learning so 
it is not just about a classroom or a video lecture. We thought a teacher should have aided tools with her or him so that while showing the experiment, let's say I want to teach gravity as an experiment. So to teach gravity, I'll use a, a small piece of uh, iron and cotton and I'll just drop it from somewhere. And by the time it falls, I can teach about gravity. What if I have a simulation for this? This, this is something that aids the teacher to tease the content. So we want the teachers to deliver the content using the interactive simulations. That is where there are a lot of FET applications that are freely available, where we can use them. And that is the biggest repository that we found as an asset, where we can pick a lot of tools from that and convert or merge it to the way we require. And that's how we started developing the virtual lab environment. So we had a GNU Linux distro. So we thought we had all these applications. We have these simulations. There are a few simulations that we built. There are a few simulations. There are a few simulations that we built, and there are a few simulations that are already available in internet. Why don't we build an operating system around it? Why can't we have an operating system around it? and build our own GNU Linux distro. That's what we initiated and we released the first ever Balaswecha always in 2008 that bundled with a lot of applications. And uh, by packing all these simulations that we have just talked about, we built something called a pencil box. It's a framework where we can click and open all these simulations all the interactive simulations we had it in the release of 2013 where we made sure all the school syllabus is mapped to the simulations available fed and many other sources provided us thousands of simulations on the internet which are freely licensed we picked the things that are required for the curriculum that we need we classified into the courses biology physics chemistry and mathematics and also in the grades that our school students study, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth standards. And that's how we integrated them. The FED simulations which are available or the simulations which are available online, we extracted, we made it offline, and we built into an operating system. Not just about making the content or extracting the content, we also looked for the localization. The most of the schools in our state, Andhra Pradesh, run on Telugu medium. So Telugu is the native language here. So if the content that is available in English, the student and the teacher can't easily access it. So we thought of doing the localization attempts on this. So let me quickly show you the operating system of Balasvecha. Yeah. So this is the Balaswicha operating system. And this is the pencil box interface that we had built where we can select the grade of the student. Let's say I want to choose the eighth grade where the simulations are available for physics, max, biology, and social. And if I pick social, I have a grade eight I'll be having a lot of subcategories or the filters of the content. Let's say I want earth movements and seasons. We have the videos made available. We have the We have the applications that are made available so that we can just click on it. We can see the description and we can run it. Where the teacher can just do the interactions and explain about the position, velocity, and acceleration. So like that, we have bundled a lot of available applications. There are a few applications that were taken from uh, existing simulations 
there are few simulations that we added up there are few simulations that our team or our developers have contributed to it that is the way old pencil box and the bar switch operating system that we had now uh, we wanted to make changes we wanted to build something which is available or accessible beyond the operating system we just don't want bar switch uh, to run just in an operating system we wanted to make available over internet so we chose to migrate or build a web platform or a web application where bar switch uh, applications can be run and the desktop portable application where it can be migrated to the platform say like and they can run on it i just want to quickly show you uh, the current work in progress so we are still working in work in progress of this web based application i hope uh, you can see my screen yeah so this is a web based application that we have built where i can just open the simulation on my browser and uh, i can run the application i can run the simulation just on the browser so yes so the same categories and everything that we are migrating onto a web based platform there are still lot of work under way because there are lot of syllabus in the schools that was changed there is lot of english and telugu language content that was added so we want to curate the content this is a work in progress we want we are in planning of developing more simulations to aid every lesson or every chapter of the class in every subject as a computer aided learning or a simulation aided learning and yes localization as well so this is how we figured out we can solve the problem of building a software you building a free software solution using free software tools and creative commons licensed content a content which can be made available for the students who are deprived from the digital access now okay building just a software doesn't do the thing that's where we thought we can why not build it infrastructure why don't we build a computer why can't we make simpler computers out of hardware that is where open hardware came to the rescue there is fully open hardware only next you know and uh, there is raspberry pi where we and there are many single board computers that are available where we can just install a basic linux operating system basically linux glue linux operating system or or else we can bundle bar switch to it and we can run it as a as a computer all we need to do is we ported bala switch on onto a raspberry pi and we just connected a monitor keyboard mouse and a internet connection and we had a single board computer ready everyone knows that uh, these single board computers are just carry we can carry with us we thought why can't we install these as a replacement to the computers or where the schools lacks the digital infrastructure let's say the cost everything comes under if we just pick the right a basic monitor or a second hand monitor or a reseller or a refurbished monitor keyboard mouse and a and a new only next you know or any single board computer we can bundle this whole low cost computer setup in around 100 dollars or 700 to 8 7000 to 8000 rupees indian rupees and that's a cost you have to pay for one windows or one proprietary license of windows operating system so with just one proprietary license 
we can build a computer and we can make it ready for the students. So this is some this other initiative that we planned. Yes, so we thought, okay, the hard we have built the hardware. We want we we found a solution for the hardware. We found a solution for the software for the digital learning environment. So are these really enough to bridge the digital divide? So if we just we give the computer and the software, will they start using it? That is where we found a problem. There are a lot of schools where they had a bunch of computers with them, which are still unused. The problem is they lack the resources who can run the, who can create the content, who can use the computing tools, who can use the power of computers to enable the learning environments. That is where we, we took up the initiatives, not for, just for the development. So why don't, why not just development? We, we thought we started with upskilling the teachers. So we run few teacher training programs for the school, for the school teachers of the private, uh, of the public education systems. We ran few programs for uh, the tribe, the teachers from the tribal areas. We call it ITDC. A, a one, two month long programs. So a 60 day long programs we have run for the teachers to use the Bar switch operating system or a GNU Linux operating system and the free software tools like LibreOffice, Inkscape, Kedden Live for design to create the content, to create the classroom environments, to use the simulations, to make videos and to make their teaching learning material. Below you can see a few snapshots of the teachers who are using Bala Switch operating system and getting trained. This is where the learning and the trainings are one part. The next initiative that we thought was the entire school uh, school infrastructure or the private schools are running robotic applications or running maker spaces where the students get access to hardware boards, the electronics, like they, they, they are building stuff like they do with Legos in their childhood. We thought, why not we build this initiative or pick a new initiative to make or to make the maker spaces in the public learning environments. That is where we took a next step ahead of taking another initiative where we can pick the idea and we can make it work and we can enable the students to enrich their ideas to make them into prototypes and then proceed ahead in actualization of their ideas. So what is the process we follow to do that? So this is more of a creative learning activity that we thought every student must possess. So not just a computer and a software. We thought there is, there is a requirement, a lot of creative learning and the preparation of ideas, building the prototypes and making them into reality. And this is where we found a lot of scope of free software and the open hardware to build this stuff. So the process that we do was we, we go to the schools, we pick, uh, we, we interact with the students, we share a few papers with them and we ask them to chop, we give a theme to figure out what is a problem that they see most in the society, in the society around or the problem that they really want to solve. And we ask few basic questions like what they want to solve, why they want to solve how they want to solve and for whom they want to solve. So I'm repeating what problem they want to solve, why they want to solve their problem, how they wanted to solve their problem and for whom they wanted to solve the problem. And we will ask them to visualize the problem and put it on a piece of paper. We'll do this activity and we'll collect the ideas and depending on the ideas, we'll pick the material we use, uh, Arduinos, we plan to use 3D printers and uh, we, we use uh, programming tools like Scratch or web-based programming 
to make their idea into a prototype and there is a great learning experience that we really got from this side this be a maker initiative where we went to school we we interacted with a lot of university students we, we interacted with a lot of private school students and share we picked the ideas from them all the ideas uh, this is something interesting that i want to share with you we went there and asked the ideas that they wanted to share or they want to be part of they they shared a lot of ideas with us uh, they wanted to use a drone to map the whole agricultural area or they want to use image processing to drive a selfless uh, driverless car or they wanted to use drone based imagery to find to understand how the crop patterns are looking so we felt wow being a school student how do how they, they are getting the ideas and what stuff they like to build and what is the availability of knowledge resources that they are getting such ideas and they can make such stuff the same activity we have done in a public school the government schools that we usually go for uh, there are three papers that you can see on the slide uh, which are written in telugu language so as most of the students are in telugu medium i'll just read it out or translate it in the english for you uh, what problem the first uh, image want to solve was they wanted to solve the problem that they were facing is uh, his legs are getting pain to walk to the school so he want to build a product or a solution where such device will reduce the pain for his leg that means he wanted to create a mobile bike or something that he can pick at his home and drop it at his school the second idea the second idea was uh, it, he want to solve it for his mother his mother is doing a lot of household chores household works and she is getting a lot of back pain so he want to build a machine which can do works for his mother the third problem is pretty much interesting he want to build a fan so he want to build a a regular fan or air air conditioner fan the problem why he wanted to solve the problem was he he was suffocating in the classroom where he don't even have a fan that is the state of infrastructure they have in the government school they don't even a lot of schools don't even have benches to sit on fans and if i look at all the ideas that i got from these schools that we got from these schools they are the grassroots level problems one problem reflects the amount of distance he want to travel every day by walking from his home to the school and come back home so he wanted to solve his problem the pain of traveling few miles away and another problem is solving the mother who is working 12 to 14 hours a day in various homes and coming home tired and with pain he wanted to build a tool for his mother which can solve his problem and the third is he is not even having a fan in his classroom and the ba- that's the basic thing that he wants to need he needs so what a diverse kind of ideas that we got from the students who are studying in public schools and the private schools who are giving the ideas like drone technology computer vision imaging which are not even their problems or not even our problems where the school the ideas that the students of the government schools are given were their problems the problems that they face that the problem they wanted to solve for themselves this is where we strongly believed balaswicha should include be a maker as a part of his initiative to make this happen so let me share you a few click videos of the be a maker initiative this is a basic smart irrigation system that way that they have built
so we collected the idea we train the students we use arduino we use free software tools we use sensors we we use prototypic equipment we use 3d printers and we make them build the solutions So what's the problem or to consolidate everything? What do we wanted to solve? Our plan, the plan is to use free software to build the tools, to use the existing tools, to make the computing accessible to the students, to bridge the divide and use open hardware to build the IT infrastructure, to make it accessible to everyone. So the whole idea of the project or the whole idea of Balaswecha is to make the technology accessible to the underprivileged. That is where we thought free software is the only way that we can do it. And the last thing is a beer maker. So who are we? We are a community of Aswecha. We are a community of students. We are a community of IT developers. We are a community of freelancers. We are a community of free software activists. We are a community of Swecha. We are a community of academicians and faculty and researchers around who try to solve or who try to use free software to build the solutions and to build the technology to solve the societal problems. Why we wanted to solve why we wanted to use free software or to solve the problems in the society. We saw a huge gap, the huge divide, the ongoing divide and the ever increasing divide between the privileged and the underprivileged in the school education, in the internet access, in the digital learning to access to many platforms. We want to tap there and we want to work on that area to make the things better. How do we do? We build communities around in the colleges, in the schools called GLEX. So GNU Linux user groups where the, technology, the students learn and build the technology, use the technology to uh, build the applications to solve the problems that are existing in the society and deploy them back. So is it just about solving the problems? Do we just build the technology and leave? No, we take the technology to the grassroots level and we do the trainings. We, we go to the students, we sit with them, we sit with, we took, we take the lap, our laptops. So uh, that's a school where there are only uh, eight to nine computers in that school for a school strength of 900 students where there are a lot of students who never even touched a computer. So while we, while we are showing a computer and asked to press something on a keyboard, they just fear to touch that computer. And they are the ninth standard students the age, at the age of 14. At the age of 14, they never even touched a computer till then. So that's a divide that we want to bridge. That's a divide that we where we want to work at. The students, so the students, we, the who, students who build the technology, take the technology back to the schools, take the technology back to the underprivileged kids and start working with them. Take to the teachers, train them and make the content more learning interactive for the students. Lastly, how can you be part of the change that we wanted to do. You can develop, you can contribute to the code. There is a new balance switch or pencil box that we were working on to make it available in the, on the web as well as multi-platform. Multi you can code for that. You can build, you can design, you can help us test, you can build, help us package it for various platforms 
you can help us localize it you can help us release it not just there you can use it redistribute it you can contribute as a volunteer if there is someone from around in india or some place where there is the same amount of digital divide that you found in your local areas you can also adapt the the whole thing that we do or you can share us how you are working to solve these ideas where we can collaborate and make the idea better yes so that is the idea of balaswecha and uh, we have a lot to cover we have lot of distance to travel we are just on our way and we have to we wanted to cover lot of distance and travel a lot and that is where we need everyone to be part of the change that we are looking for thank you very much and uh, i'm open for questions uh, okay shripat we have approximately 5 minutes to cover the questions and the first question is from mason pj and i will be also pasting the questions in the chat for you uh, is there a focus on student teacher desktop software or are there are efforts around administrative enterprise software as well and then he gives an example of a learning management system called moodle okay yes this the focus of our tool is to facilitate the teacher to use the learning content or the interactive simulations to create a better learning environment for the students and uh, moodle which is a learning management system is a, can be is a free software can be self deployed on any local server that we require and we are installing as a part of our a uh, bar switch initiative and we will be providing the access to the students as well so i don't think it's a enterprise software okay so the next question is uh, we have from noisy toot is bal switcha gnu fsdf compliant uh i'm really noisy too uh, i'll just need to check with the team and i'll get back with you with the answer okay and there were also some requests to add the links regarding the project regarding the isos the applications and educational materials that bal swecha has and we might paste them in the irs chat later definitely we'll do that Okay, and the next question is from N Mag, and they ask like, do Bal Swecha has full English support, and are other other languages also supported? Okay, uh, Bal Swecha operating system is built out of GNU Linux. So, as a look as I look at the localization of any GNU Linux, it is available for most all the languages. and balaswecha uh, the pencil box framework it is now completely in english and there are lot of simulations that are available for multiple languages and it would be happy if you can be part of the localization to contribute to your local languages okay that's nice and the next question is regarding the sponsorship like who sponsors the bal swecha project and how do you guys raise the funding and stuff okay so as we said uh, we are an organization we are an organization called swecha as a, as an organization we run few training activities we uh, we run we interact with the students we we raise funds through those activities and we invest the funds that we raised in the development of these projects going to the schools and doing the activities over there so that's how we are funded we are funded by the crowd okay that's nice to hear and the next question is from gnu2 
uh, it's a general question regarding the operating system. So they want to know about like, how do you plan to unify the operating system? Uh, since there might be different architectures, single board computers, second hand computers and stuff like that. And you might need to manage all those and manage and support all those different architectures. So how do you make it easy to install and enhance the user experience? Okay, so the the, the primary project of Baraswecha when we started around uh, there is a computer which uses n computing machine. So n computing is where we have one CPU and 10, 10 monitors. So all the 10 mo monitors share the same CPU and run in a virtualization like mode. We had to struggle to use uh, existing GNU Linux operating system where only Ubuntu 10.10 used to support that n computing machine, which is a proprietary device. And later, we, we built something on the next versions of Ubuntu as well. So how do we pick and choose the kind of hardware we build on? A lot of the government schools, as we are working on the government schools, we have a common architecture of computers across all the schools, like a similar processor models and the similar uh, motherboard models. So we just get the information, we take a feedback across the schools and we try out building the operating system on that. And yes, on a single board computer, we are trying to build it. For now, we are using Raspbian and we are installing all the Debian packages on it. And we are making the SD card ready so, so that we can just port the SD card or clone the SD card across various platforms and we can reuse it. So for every every model or every workaround, we, are, we, we have multiple challenges and we are coming across a solution for for case to case. I, I hope I answered your question, Nudu. Okay, so we don't have any further questions and people are appreciating you. So we have appreciation from Piliro. Okay, then we also have the Twitcha AP Twitter IBS and you might want to Post the links to all the resources in the Liver Planet Neptune room so that people who are interested might access them. And thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Sripad, for the talk. Thank you very much. Uh, for everyone who are uh, interested or have more questions, you can just ping us on Twitter at Swecha AP. We will be happy to answer there and we can still continue the discussions over there. Okay, I guess that's the end of the talk and Ian Kelling must be handling the- Thank you very much nice. and uh, hope many of us will be collaborating together to bridge this digital divide. Thank you so much.